Hello everyone. I hope you are all doing well today. My name is Bhav Jain and today I would like to talk about my science fair project. What is the effect of acid rain on plants? Before we begin, I'd like to explain what exactly acid rain is. Acid rain is any form of precipitation that is more acidic than neutral water. Here's an example of how acid rain clouds look. You can see that they're all slightly yellowish in tint. And you can also notice that the factories to the side are contributing a lot of smoke and pollution to the acid rain clouds. What exactly is acid rain? Acid rain is a huge issue around the world. In most developed nations, such as the nations of North America, people tend to think that acid rain is a thing of the past. And in developed countries, it is. However, in the rapidly developing world, and in countries such as India, China, and most of Africa, acid rain destroys many crops annually. Acid rain is dangerous to crops, not by killing the crops directly, but by also reducing the quality of the soil to make the crops give less yield. India and China are also major food producers for the world, and this is why acid rain is a big problem. They generate most of the rice, milk, and grain that the entire world eats. And this is why acid rain is a huge problem to be tackled from a worldwide perspective. What are the causes of acid rain? Acid rain is caused by the reactions of the chemical pollutants, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxide. Climate change interferes with the soil's capability to buffer the acid rain away. Soil is naturally capable of dealing with rain that has a pH of up to five, which is slightly acidic, but man-made climate change keeps making the rain more and more and more acidic and it's becoming our own worst enemy. Acid rain leaches many essential nutrients from the soil and can bring the aluminum from the soil's bedrock out and into the soil. This is bad for growing crops because aluminum is toxic to plants. For many countries in the developing world who live harvest to harvest, meaning they barely finish their last harvest food and they reach the new harvest, acid rain can spell widespread famine. So here's the plan for the experiment. I started out this experiment by having 12 pots in total. These pots were divided into four groups. At the start of the experiment, all 12 of the pots received equal amounts of soil in them. Afterwards, I distributed 10 tens bean seeds to each and every single pot. Afterwards, I put one more inch of soil in every pot so that the plants could germinate well. For days one and two, all 12 of the plants would be, would be given 150 milliliters of water. This is so that the plant groups have an opportunity to germinate before testing begins. After this, the plants will begin to receive water based on their group. The groups are the control group, which receives normal water, the lemon group, which receives water mixed with lemon juice, the vinegar group, which receives water mixed with vinegar, and the soap group, which receives water mixed with basic soap. The plants in this experiment are Indian moong green beans, otherwise known by their scientific name as Vigna radiata. Here's the pH level of all the substances involved. The pH level of vinegar is 2.2 to 2.5, which is highly acidic. The pH of pure lemon juice is 2, which is extremely acidic. The pH level of soap is 10 to 10.5, which is highly basic. And the pH level of water is 7 neutral. The pH level of acid rain can vary, but most of the time it's around four, which is a strong acid. Here are the measurements for days one through six. You can see that each day the plants grow by either one or a half an inch on average. You can see, however, that on certain days, some plants grow very little or they, or they don't grow at all. For example, on day two, the vinegar grew by in the entire first day, it had barely grown of one fifth of an inch whereas the control group had grown two inches on its first day. Some of the most important days of the experiment were days seven, eight, nine, and 10. Day seven, these days were very important because as you can see, on day seven, the control group was six inches tall and the soap group was 5.5 inches tall, which is normal, right? For all the days after, the soap group underwent a period of rapid growth. And by the end of this period, it was a half an inch taller than the control group. This is where we first discovered that the soap and basic water can actually be good for plants. Over here, I have the pictures for every day of the experiment. For day one, 
I took the pictures after putting in the seeds so that you could see that I put the seeds in. Afterwards, I put in one layer of soil, one inch of soil, like I mentioned earlier. You can see that for the next few days, the plants first germinated like they did on day two. And then for all the days afterwards, they grew at a relatively similar pace to each other. They all grew at around half an inch per day. However, on day six, you can actually notice that the base group, which is on the far left, is much more expansive and is growing much more vitally than the control group is, which is on the far right. For days seven, eight, nine, and 10, as I mentioned earlier, you can notice how much the base group is growing. You can see that it is completely extending itself towards the sun. And at the end of the experiment on day 12, it was much more vital and much stronger than all of the other days and all of the other groups. Here I have a close up of all the groups on the final day of the experiment. You can notice that I put a ruler into the soil and tried to align it so that if you wish, you can zoom in and see the heights. You can also see in this close up photo how much the soap uh, plants are vital compared to the control plants. There are certain anomalies in the experiment, such as in the vinegar group. You can notice that two of the pods have almost completely withered away and died, whereas the third pod just has a few leaves on it. But for the most part, for their average height, leaf count, and health, you can see that the most vital group is the soap group, which is a new breakthrough, as I mentioned earlier, then the control group, then the lemon group, and last is the vinegar group, which nearly died by the, by the end of the experiment. For the analysis to this experiment, after looking through the data, I can conclude that acids are extremely harmful to plants. This was shown by the decreased growth and eventual death of the vinegar plant and low growth shown in the lemon plants. Bases were found to be good for plants due to all of the base soap water plants doing better than all of the plants of the control group. This was emulated by a higher leaf count and taller and healthier plants in general. To apply this to the real world, we can try to regulate the pH given to crops when, the, when we water them every single day and make it slightly basic. It has to be only slightly basic so that we don't affect the people actually eating the crops and there are no unforeseen health concerns. If we do this, then the plants are more likely to grow up healthier than plants given normal water and are definitely going to grow up healthier than the plants who have issues with acid rain. Some future studies regarding this experiment could include, a new experiment could be, and here are the procedures. The procedures for this new experiment will be getting four groups of plants like I did with this experiment. Three groups towards the end of the experiment will receive varying levels of basic water and there will be one control group. Each group of plants minus a control group would receive water that was acidified to the pH level of acid rain for a possible period of 12 days. All of the plants afterwards would receive varying levels of basic water. We can do this to test out the capability of basic water helping out with actual plants. And we can also do this to test out how much basic water can help heal plants affected by acid rain. To apply this to the real world and to make it real world viable, the plants involved in this experiment would have to be either wheat, rice, potatoes, or beans, as these are staple crops all over the world. A staple crop is a crop that in a certain region, all the, pe all the people in that region have this crop as what they eat the majority of the time. For example, in Asia, a staple crop would be rice because many people spend at least four to five days out of their week eating rice at least once per day. In conclusion, excessive acids such as acid rain are extremely harmful to plants like my data shows. However, a new breakthrough was discovered that bases can actually be good for plants, but this will be need to be tested more in the future. A good follow-up experiment would be the one that I just mentioned earlier. I hope you enjoyed this presentation and now know a bit more about acid rain and its effects. Thank you judges for your time. I hope you have, all have a great day.